Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz, and in today's video, I have a whole bathroom renovation and makeover to share with you. Back in January, Chris and I purchased a lake house and we are renovating every room pretty much in this lake house. Now the room I'm gonna be sharing with you today was our biggest renovation. So how this renovation started is we wanted to put a bathroom in the primary bedroom. The primary bedroom was actually an addition that somebody had built on at some point and there was two closets in this room. So we kind of considered using one of the closets for the bathroom because there was a really big closet Closet. We also considered taking some space out of the room to put a bathroom in. In the end, we decided let's go with the closet and that's where this whole process started. We started with a closet and we decided to convert it to a bathroom. So the first thing we did was just demo. We took everything down to the studs. Next, we ran electrical. We needed to make sure we had electrical for two outlets up top. And then I also wanted to put some sconces by the vanity mirror, so we added electric there. We also removed the old insulation and put in new. Now, since this was such a tiny room, one of the decisions we made was to put in a pocket door versus a door that swung open into the room. So we built in where the pocket door would be. Next, we had to create framing for where our shower was going to sit. We made sure that our shower base fit. We had all of the plumbing installed for the shower, the toilet, and the sink that's gonna be on the vanity. Next, we built up the shower. We then installed the drywall on the ceiling as well as the walls. Now, one thing that I really didn't wanna do was we actually put knockdown texture on the ceiling as well as our walls. All of the walls in this house have this knockdown texture. So I went ahead and put it in this room, although I would have just preferred to put it on the ceiling. Now the floors were pretty interesting for this room. In the rest of the house, I'm using luxury vinyl plank for the floors. And I found this product at Home Depot that is a luxury vinyl plank in like a marble, almost like tile finish. I thought it was really interesting. It was a great price point, And I thought, let's try that for the bathroom. So you lay it just like you would lay down luxury vinyl plank. We put an underlayment underneath because this is a bathroom, but I. I really like the way it looks. I wanna tell you about the new game my girls and I have been spending so much time playing. It's the game Project Makeover. They recently launched a collaboration with the show Queer Eye to promote positivity and openness. And I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video. This game is so fun to play. My girls love the design and dress up section where you can select characters' hairstyles and their clothing. My favorite part of the game and the part that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy is when you get to pretend like you're a designer and you get to decorate and renovate the home decor space. I love getting to select the furniture and the flooring and the curtains for the space. There's also challenging puzzles that you complete along the way. If you've ever wanted to give someone a makeover like they do on the show Queer Eye, this is the perfect game. And the fun part is the characters from the show are narrating along the way. I love playing this game whenever I need to pass time. It's super positive and it always puts me in a good mood. You can download Project Makeover in the App Store for free. I'm gonna put the link Link down below in the description box. After we installed our floors, we needed to put in the baseboard. So I started by painting my baseboards with two coats of the Evergreen Fog, which is actually Sherwin-Williams color of 2022, but it's a beautiful green color. I also painted the window trim that we're gonna put around the window. We're gonna be using the door that was on the closet originally. And at first I thought I wanted to paint it with accessible beige. So I actually painted the whole thing that color. Then I decided I was going to just keep it white. So I came back in with my wall color, which is Swiss Coffee by Sherwin-Williams. I also had to add some wood filler to the side of my pocket doors. I 
painted the entire room, ceiling, and walls with Swiss coffee at 70%, which is the color I've been using throughout the entire house. I've been getting a few comments where people are like, Liz, why do you get your paint at 70%? Like, I don't understand that. Well, the reason I do that is because Swiss coffee at 100% is a little yellow. I want it to be more neutral. So I find that at 70%, it makes it more of a neutral color. You can always change the opacity of paints to kind of adjust the color a little bit. I find that I do that more with white colors versus any other like blue or green color. Next, we added in the door casing. Then we added in the baseboards. To attach the baseboards, we're gonna be using my nail gun. I'll link it for you down in the description box. We framed the window with that fluted door casing. I love the way this looked. I actually went back and purchased more so I could put it in my bedroom. Did you know that I have a second channel called Liz from McDaily? On that channel, live streaming weekly, I'm posting daily DIYs, behind the scenes content. If you're not following me on Liz from McDaily, go check it out, subscribe, you're not gonna regret it. I wanted to add some beadboard to this room. I've actually never put up beadboard, so we bought it at Lowe's. Uh, it comes in like big four by eight sheets, and we just cut each of the sheets in half. One of the hardest parts about beadboard is making the measurements for all your openings. So we kind of had to make measurements for outlets and then we had to account for uneven walls, but it went up really well once we got the measurements figured out and we just used the nail gun to nail it in. We found the studs on the wall and nailed it in place. One of the tedious tasks that I had to do was fill all the holes, but it's worth it in the end. Whenever you're adding in baseboards or beadboard, you wanna make sure that you caulk all of your seams. I did that on the edge. I also did it where it met the baseboards. This is just going to give you a seamless look once you go into paint. It takes a while, but it's worth it. To finish everything off, I put some door casing on the top of the beadboard. This was just going to give me a finished look. I finished it off by putting in more caulking along the edges and filling the holes. From there, it was a lot of painting. I actually had to use a brush to paint on that beadboard. I found that that actually worked better than using my roller. It took me a while to paint the baseboards, beadboard, and door casing. I also had to clean the window in there. It was pretty dirty and it originally had like a window unit in there, so it definitely needed to be cleaned. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is vanity. 
Because this was a small bathroom, I needed to utilize as much storage as possible. So I wanted to add a shelf on one of the edges across from where the shower is. So I grabbed a one by six by eight board at Lowe's. I cut it down so it would fit perfectly on my shelf. I stained the board and I nailed that in place. I added a little bit of caulking underneath the shelf and did some touch-up paint. Honestly, I spent a lot of time doing touch-up paint in this room because I wanted it to look great, but it was worth it. From there, we added in our lighting. Now, I am obsessed with the lighting. The ceiling lights are so pretty. We added in two. I also added in two sconces that are going to be on either side of the mirror. We installed the vanity as well as the toilet. I bought these very inexpensively at Lowe's. I also picked up a bamboo shade off of Amazon and put that in. I love bamboo shades because they provide enough privacy, but they also have texture to them, which I think looks really nice to kind of just add a little bit of dimension to your room. I spent a little bit more on this mirror because I wanted it to have an archway to it, but it is adorable. I love how it looks above the vanity. I picked out this beautiful gold faucet off of Amazon. You guys, again, I'm gonna link to everything down in the description box, but I was really trying to take an inexpensive vanity and make it look a little bit more high end. So one of my ideas with the door casing that went around the top edge, I thought I could add in quite a few wall hooks. So I found these inexpensive wood wall hooks off of Amazon, and I'm just going to add those in underneath the shelf I'm also going to put them on the wall where when you enter in, it's like the doorway wall. That's just going to give us so much more room to hang towels, swimsuits, or anything we need to hang. We connected in all the plumbing for the vanity faucet. I also made the decision to get some new handles at Lowe's because I wanted to change them up to black. And one of the things that's really popular right now in bathroom decors is mixing your metals. So don't be afraid to have black handles with a gold faucet. You don't have to do them all matchy matchy. You can definitely switch it up. Now we're getting to the fun part, which is a lot of the decor items. I thrifted this vase and I wanted to change up the color, so I spray painted it the color Nutmeg. I grabbed another thrifted vase that I'm gonna spray with a cream color. And I'm gonna add one of my new favorite spray paints, which is the Stone Texture. And then I also picked up these cute flowers off of Amazon. I'm gonna add those into the vase. I thought these looked adorable sitting in my windowsill. On my channel, I post a variety of videos. I do a lot of makeover videos, but I also do Dollar Tree, Ikea, Five Below DIYs. So I would love to know from you guys, do you enjoy seeing the home makeover videos? If you like seeing them, give me a thumbs up. I'll know to do more like it in the future. Next, let's style my shelf. I have been really enjoying picking up prints that you can download off of Etsy. And I've been printing these off of Amazon's print shop. You can actually upload prints to Amazon and print. They'll come in the mail. It's really inexpensive, so I like doing that. But I bought this set of like Etsy prints that had like boats and kind of water related items. So I'm gonna do a 16 by 20 print for this shelf, the frame I grabbed at Target. The vases are from Dollar General, and this basket I picked up at Five Below. Now the basket is going to just give me extra storage in this room. In a previous DIY, I showed you guys how to create this Q-tip vase, and I'm gonna add that in as well. My towel that I'm hanging up is from Amazon. 
instead of going out and buying a trash can, I really wanted something wicker and vintage looking. So I found this trash can for a couple of dollars at a thrift store. On the doorway wall, I wanted to add some prints as well above where I put the wall hooks. These are Etsy prints as well. I went with the 11 by 14 size and got the same picture frame from Target. The shower, I put in a gold faucet and I wanted to have a glass door. I felt like a glass door was going to make the room look a lot bigger than if we used a shower curtain. So it just kind of helps to expand the room a little bit more. I put a hand towel over by the vanity, and of course I had to accessorize the vanity a little bit. I found this adorable plant from Ikea and this wicker plant pot. If you're looking for them now, I just bought them, so hopefully they're in stock for you. One of my tricks to make my soap look a little bit more high end is I like to get these glass bottles from Home Goods. They're usually under $5, and then you can just refill them as you run out of soap. I wanted to put a cutting board underneath the plant and my soap, so I had two options. You guys are gonna have to let me know which one you like better. The first option was one I got in the Target dollar spot for $5. It was more of a cutting board shape. And the other one was a rectangular cutting board that I picked up at a local store. Now let me know in the comments which one you think I should go with, either option A or option B. In the end, I went with the one that's in the rectangular shape but you never know, I could always change it out. I have to tell you guys, I make over a lot of rooms and this is honestly my new favorite room. I love how it turned out. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this room and I'll talk to you in our next one. Bye.